Yeah, you don't want to miss the rest of it's okay. No, but anything is not related. All right, but if you're going to share it, that's not okay. It's 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 Three airports I went to. Yeah, they leave this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget you for it. Never. Never. My mother is something to hear about a story that is so important, that touches us all so deeply. And I was thinking, and I was, you know, we had some members of the community here a little earlier, and I was addressing them, and some of the things that I was touching upon, I thought it would be so, so important just to share with all of you as students, as young people, as young professionals, members of the community, the Jewish community, the Holocaust hits home very, very hard. Many of us have relatives, family members that have gone through the Holocaust, have survived, and whenever we hear about the Holocaust, we right away start to think about these people that we know, our loved ones who have gone through it. But one thing that is so, so important for us to resolve at the end of any event related to the Holocaust is what are we doing about it now? What is the relevance to us? What does this mean for me as a young student, young professional, somebody living, a Jewish person living in Ottawa in the year 2011? What's the relevance? What, what message am I taking? Where am I going with this? And I think with this story in particular, about a group of people who wouldn't just sit around and watch it happen, who stood up, who took action, who said, we're going to fight. We're going to do whatever it takes. We're going to put our lives on the line because we have to do what we have to do. These are people who went and saved hundreds, if not thousands of lives people who were going to die. And there's so many people who are still continuing to this very day to come to Tzvi Belsky and tell him, if it weren't for your father and his, the people that he knew and the people that he, that he did that amazing work with, we wouldn't be around today. So all of us, I think, the message that we can take is that in some way, we ourselves are finding, we find ourselves on a little, on a battleground of sorts. The battleground is in a completely different sphere. The hostility is not coming from people who are out in the open. They're not pointing guns. They're not telling us that you can't be around because you're Jewish. What we are facing is we're facing a threat to Jewish people that is still a very, very big threat. The threat is, can we face the challenge and still show that Judaism is important today in the 21st century? To me, as a young person, as a young Jewish person, am I going to take Judaism seriously? Am I going to say, I am going to keep the Jewish nation alive? Yes, me, on my shoulders. I am going to join in the fight. I'm not going to stand around. I'm going to take action. I'm going to get involved. I'm going to come, I'm going to come to a Shabbos dinner, I'm going to come, I'm going to learn. I sit all day long and I learn in university, I'm going to learn something about my Jewish path, my Jewish heritage, what it means to be a Jew. I don't really know what it means to be a Jew, I'm going to find out. That's taking action, that's showing that I deeply care. That's showing I'm not going to lose, we're not going to lose the fight. Am Yisrael Chai, the Jewish people is going to live. We're going to live and we're going to survive and we're going to thrive and we're going to make the next generation and generations to come so, so proud to be Jewish, so involved, so happy, so much a part of our lives that Judaism is not back burner. Judaism is very front burner. It's relevant. It means so much. That is by coming and being a part of it. Every single day we wake up in the morning and we say, Modani, thank you, God, for putting me here in this world. We think about prayer, we think about God, we think about how life is so important. Getting involved in something Jewish, getting involved in, you know, throughout the week, throughout the semester, there's always opportunity. So I just want to ask all of you to share in that challenge by taking action, getting involved, 
You have so many different opportunities for getting involved. And um, two opportunities that come to mind just right now off, my, off the top of my head, tomorrow night, holiday, Jewish holiday. Anybody know what Jewish holiday is? Jewish spot. It's a new year for trees. And um, a really wonderful holiday that teaches us a lot, a lot of great lessons about growth and about progress and development and um, new beginnings. And it's a really, really special time. We're having a girls' event. We're doing flower pot painting. We're having a stir fry dinner. Um, we're going to be doing some talking and a lot of great discussion. So if you can make it out for that, or if you can't because you're at class or whatever, please spread the word. Let your friends know so that they can, that they can jo um, join. We're also, um, we have uh, an upcoming trip for students. And this is, uh, the idea came from students themselves, Boston. We're going to be heading down to Boston, going, visiting some of the uh, Chabad centers on campus there, and uh, the universities there, and seeing the community, the Jewish community there, and I hear it's a really, really great place. So it's going to be a lot of fun. You can find out more about it by contacting either Time or I, or getting in touch with us, Facebook. You're going to see a lot coming up. So. Without further ado, I'd just like to call up a very special student by the name of Rebecca. And Rebecca um, will be sharing some words with us and introducing our guest speaker for the evening. So thank you all so much. opportunity to thank Rabbi Chaim and Yochebet Boyarski for allowing me to have the privilege to introduce our acclaimed guest speaker, Mr. Tzvi Bielski. In Jewish tradition, it is customary to mark every gathering with Kiddush Hashem, to elevate the occasion with an expression of our devotion to God. The Kiddush Hashem tonight is through the mitzvah of honoring one's parents, Kibbut Abba Ed. Mr. Tzvi Bielski's appearance tonight is a profound tribute to his father's story. <coughs> he has dedicated himself to telling the heroic story of his family and the rest of the Jews that were saved thanks to the Bielski Austriad, ensuring that our Jewish history continues to remain alive even today. Alexander Zisel Zeus Bielski, was born in 1912. He grew up in the only Polish family in Stankiewicz a small village in eastern Poland, now western Belarus. Zeus was the son of David and Bela Bielski, who had 12 children, 10 boys and 2 girls. With his brothers, he formed the Bielski Partisans. The group hid in the forests of Belarus throughout World War II, led by the Bielski brothers. Zeus, along with his brothers Tuvia, Asael, Aaron, managed to save over 1,200 Jews. Although he left the partisans for the Red Army for a few months, Zeus returned to save his brothers and the innocent Jews from the Germans. Today, those who were saved have close to 20,000 offspring. In Exodus 20:12, we learn, Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord your God gives to you. As instructed in the Torah, Mr. Tzvi Bielski perpetuates the memory of his father, with all due honor and reverence. However, in Leviticus 19.3, the instruction is phrased differently. You shall revere every man his mother and his father, and keep my Sabbath. I am the Lord your God. We learn here that by appearing tonight for the purpose of honoring the past, Mr. Bielski is performing yet another mitzvah. One that emphasizes the importance of preserving a Jewish future for all of us. Without further ado, please welcome Mr. Tzvi Bielski. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Um, what is your name? Rebecca. <laughs> Rebecca did a great job. Now take our picture. Smile. Okay. Thank you. Um, first, guys, thanks for having me. I don't know where to start, so I'll try to make it as interesting as I can. Rabbi, Rabbi, please, when I'm talking, let me talk. So, can you invite me? I'm the rabbi's guest. Everybody knows the rabbi and his wife. We want to welcome them to their own home today. 
Actually, the rabbi called me just this morning when I, on my way here, and people have heard the story actually last night. He said, Sweet, Sweet, do me a favor, just carry a little package for me. I, said, I was just going to tell him, Rabbi, I'm an Israeli soldier, I'm hurt, my back is killing me, he didn't give me a chance. I said, Rabbi, he said, oh, don't worry about it, it's a small little pack, it's nothing. So I walked through the airport today carrying like a table yeah. on my head. <laughs> From Kennedy Airport to LaGuardia Airport to Toronto to here. So thank you, Rabbi, for making me feel welcome. <laughs>